Hi, so we're back for lab exercise 12. And I'm gonna break this one up into two um, videos. The first one will be just a really short video. I wanna use the models, um, not only for lab, but also for lecture, because I think they do a really good job of showing um, what you can't see, and that is a muscle cell um, at the cellular level. So I'm gonna go through the first half of the lab and then I'll stop the video and then do the second half of the lab on the more macro stuff. So the first portion of the lab will just be the micro stuff. This is actually supposed to be just one single muscle cell. And this is actually showing you the neuromuscular junction. So this right here is supposed to be the neuron that's coming in um, to innervate the muscle here. So this is muscle cell. So this is all supposed to be one singular muscle cell, which gets confusing. And the reason being is that muscle cells um, contain these organized units of what we call myofibrils. So these are the smaller fibers called the myofibrils. And you can see they're organized into these nice units. And the individual um, fibers inside are made up of the actin and myosin. So actin and myosin fibers themselves or proteins themselves will make up the myofibrils and these myofibrils um, you can see um, have what are called sarcomeres so these are sarcomeres so hopefully that will help you kind of to see and then this is where it gets a little bit confusing so they call muscle cells so the entire muscle cell so this is all believe it or not, um, all one muscle cell. It's all one singular muscle cell. And um, I don't know why, but they, to make it right confusing for you, they call muscle cells muscle fibers. And the reason, I think, being is that muscle cells don't look like your typical animal cell. They're these elongated cells. So muscle, the word muscle fiber means muscle cell. Um, and so if you look inside, they're going to have these contractile units that we're going to talk in lecture about in depth um, called sarcomeres. And those sarcomeres are going to be, um, you're going to see the um, overlap of actin and myosin, the contractile fibers that allow for our muscle contraction. And it's these um, sarcomeres and some of the overlapping um, patterns of the, the um, bands, the actin and myosin, in the sarcomeres that give muscle cells their striations, their striated pattern. Um, so hopefully that will kind of help you um, to orient yourself. So, oh, and the last thing is um, they do have a couple other things they want you to know. They want you to know um, the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which would be like basically the endoplasmic reticulum for... Um, a muscle cell. So all of this stuff here is the sarcoplasmic reticulum here. And hopefully that will be helpful for you in terms of um, when we do this in, in lecture. And then the sarcolemma, the sarcolemma is just going to be this outer layer here that covers um, right here, this outer layer that actually covers um, the muscle fiber, muscle cell. So it's that, just that outermost, let me see if I can. So here, this is the sarcolemma. Not the white portion here, but this right underneath it, that little line is the sarcolemma. So it's just basically the, uh, basically the outer membrane of, kind of the, the plasma membrane of a muscle cell. Um, let's see. So, and then we got sarcoplasmic reticulum. So we got all the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Um, transverse tubules we'll talk more about. I don't think you have to know them for lab, but um, the transverse tubules you will have to know for lecture, so I'm just going to show them to you here in blue. And then again, sarcoplasmic reticulum. And so we'll talk about all of those parts actually are very important in terms of understanding muscle contraction. Um, let's see. I'm just going to show you, because um, I have the opportunity to show you in lab, the difference between, I know you don't have to know this for lab, but you will have to know it for lecture, the difference between skeletal muscle. So this would be a skeleton, a couple skeletal fibers, right? Those are the skeletal fibers are the individual cells. So here are a couple skeletal fibers or skeletal muscle cells. And you can see that they're going to have this nice striated pattern. But one of the interesting things about muscle cells is that they're multinucleate. 
So they'll, they'll have many, uh, more than one nucleus, so multinucleate. And they're chocked full, of course, of mitochondria, which is what you saw in here. Lots and lots and lots of mitochondria um, in red there because they, um, again, are, are, they need that energy. Remember, the mitochondria are the powerhouse for the cell. So they need those mitochondria to do the, um, to power the muscle contraction, power um, the, the cells to do that. So um, this one, again, is a skeletal. This is an example of a skeletal muscle fiber. And um, you can see the thing about skeletal muscle is that it's really organized. So like not only do you have the inside of the muscle cell organized um, with these myofibrils, but then the muscle cells themselves um, will be organized into these nice units called fascicles. And then those fascicles will be bundled, bundled tightly together um, to form. And you can see all this in your, there's a, actually a great diagram of all of this on page 132 in your um, lab handout. So skeletal muscles are really kind of, they're nice and organized and compact. They're all crammed in there, okay? Nice and neat and organized. And so again, yeah, you'll see those nice striations. Now in smooth muscle, smooth muscle cells, you won't see the striations. So, and again, we'll talk about smooth muscles um, when we talk about like the digestive tract and things like that, you'll, um, we'll get into smooth muscles. And so they'll have this nice single nuclei in them. There are these kind of elongated cells and no striations. So you won't see striations in the smooth muscle. So that, that's a nice example of smooth muscle. And then the third type, so this is your cardiac muscle cell. And you're going to see that in your cardiac muscle cells, you're going to have striations like you would in skeletal muscle. But each cell will only have a single nuclei. And then you're going to have these junctions in between each cell called the intercalated discs. And those intercalated discs will be very important. We'll talk about those in lecture because this will allow your muscle cells to contract as one. Okay, I think that's it.